This is Checkpoint Charlie, located in the American sector of West Berlin. Allied officials, tourists, or Western businessmen wishing to enter East Germany clear through here. Traffic moving through Checkpoint Charlie is of great interest to the Vopos, the East German police. Traffic is also of great interest to West German counterintelligence personnel. They are well aware that communist agents, documented as West German residents, occasionally use Charlie as an infiltration point. When a known East German agent like this one, Franz Hornung, enters West Berlin, his actions are kept under constant surveillance. The purpose of the surveillance is to identify the individuals Hornung will contact, locate the places where such contacts are made, ascertain the mission and targets of the espionage net, and ultimately neutralize the hostile operation. This man, Gustav Freulich, is the owner of a small bookshop. He is also known to West German counterintelligence. The reason Herr Freulich is so well known is that his bookshop is merely a cover for his espionage activities. Sergeant Prentiss. Yes, sir. Will you come in here, please? Yes, sir. Here are some more working papers on contingency plan four. Please lock them up with the rest of the file. Yes, sir. Sergeant Prentice has been selling classified information to Gustav Freulich for some time. Fully aware of this espionage activity, U.S. Army and West German counterintelligence agencies have had both men under constant surveillance, awaiting a propitious time to apprehend them.
Hey, Fuller, check me on this, will you? It's almost quitting time if you guys want to take off. Go ahead. You coming too, Sarge? No, I get some more work. The contingency plan, which Prentice is photographing, is fictitious. It was developed by Berlin Brigade Military Intelligence in cooperation with S3. In the early phases of an operation, surveillance must be discreet, with every effort made to avoid alerting the suspect. The agent must be prepared to cope with any counter-surveillance action the suspect may take, and if necessary, abort the mission to avoid compromise. How'd it go last night, Tom? I'm consolidating the report right now, but I can give you a rundown if you like. All right, let's have it. Come on into my office. You too, then. When a report of a surveillance is presented, each detail must be defined following a chronological sequence. Note the manner in which Special Agent Ross delivers his report. Prentice departed headquarters building at 1722. Then he got into his car and he drove to Hammerstrasse 10, where his girlfriend also bear lives. And he arrived at 1806. 
And they left the apartment in 1932 and they drove to the Forest House restaurant located at 8 Barnumotrasprasse, arriving at 2003. They go there a lot, don't they? Yes, sir, two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. Go on. Furnace parked the car around the corner from the restaurant on Miss Dreyer's process. And then inside, they sat at a table in the corner against the wall. Thank you, sir. Bitte. Thank you, sir. Bitte. Oh, Fred, I saw the most beautiful dress on paint in the little shop on the Kudam. Will you get it for me, darling? Another one. I thought I bought you a new dress only last week. What do you think I got, money tree? But you want me to look nice, don't you? And the dress is on sale. You would be saving money, hmm? Okay, okay, I'll think about it. At 2042, Gustav Freulich entered the restaurant, and he sat in a booth near the entrance facing Prentice. A few moments later, one of our West German intelligence friends came in and he sat opposite Freulich. Guten Abend, bitte sehr. Was möchten Sie essen? Eine Käseschnitzel und eine Karaffe Rotwein, bitte. I'll be right back. At 20.51, Prentice went into the men's room. And he came out a few moments later and returned to his table. Right after that, Froelich went into the men's room. Do you think Prentice might have planted anything in there? Yes, sir, I do. Because when Froelich returned to his table, he drank a full glass of wine at one gulp, and then he quickly refilled the glass. Now, a German, normally, doesn't drink wine like it's a glass of water. And it could have been a signal. Anyway, it looked that way to me. Right after that, Prentice started acting different. Well, what would you like to do now? Could we see that new movie at the Royal Palace? I hear it is very exciting. It's getting a little late and I've got a big day tomorrow. Why don't we go up to your place? Or we can go to the movie some other time. Well... If that's what you want. Prentice paid his bill at 2103. And then, for some reason or other, Elsa started giving him a bad time. But he must have promised her something, because uh, she kissed him and they left the restaurant like a couple of lovebirds. I followed them out and then Jack and Harry took over. Fresh no bitter. That's his fusee. Thank you, sir. Big shot. Always a big shot. What do you mean, big shot? Hey, what's eating you? Why did you leave such a big tip? If I ask you to buy me a little dress, you complain about money. But for waiters, you have plenty. Stop the gripe. You can have the dress. Yes. And I can buy it tomorrow? Sure. Put a deposit on it, and I'll give you the money tomorrow night. Thank you. Darling. Okay, okay, come on, let's get out of here.
And now we go to my place, yes? And now we go to your place, yes. We followed them to Elsa's building, sir. They went upstairs at 2144. We waited outside the house until we were relieved by Adler and Smith at 0200. I checked with them a little while ago. Nothing happened on their shift. Apprentices are work now. Okay, I'll check with Anders at West German Intelligence and get the results of their surveillance of Freulich. Freulich left the fourth Post restaurant at 2142. He walked two streets to Breitestraße and got into a black Mercedes West Berlin license BES 464. My men followed the Mercedes into Fröhlich's house, Flensburger Straße 31. In a few minutes, Fröhlich went into the house. They followed the car to Checkpoint Charlie. It went into East Berlin at 2316. Do you know the driver of the car? Oh, yes. He's Franz Horn, an East Berlin agent. We've been watching him for a long time. Carl, we're about ready to pick up Prentice. How do you feel about Freulich? Well, we have enough information on that Freulich to apprehend him any time we wish. But uh, wouldn't it be better if we could pick them up at the same time? I agree. It would be more advantageous if we could. The apprehension of an espionage agent in the act of passing information provides conclusive proof of the individual's complicity in the crime. Let's wait till the end of the week. If nothing happens by then, we'll make our move. All right. Till the end of the week, then. Okay. I'll keep this thing. Okay. If anything breaks before then, Carl, I'll let you know. Thanks. Morning, Major. Morning, Sergeant. Here are the last of the uh, working papers on contingency plan four. Have the plan final typed as soon as possible and brought under accountability. How many copies? One in four. Do you want to proofread them before they're brought under accountability? Yes, I do. Okay, sir, I'll have Miss Lee get on when she gets back. How long do you think it'll take? I don't know, sir, but I'll try and have it ready by tomorrow. Good, bring it to me as soon as it's finished. Yes, sir. Here, Fröhlich. This is Willie. I told you never to call me here. I know, but this is important. The item is finished. Oh, all right. Bring it to my house at 6 o'clock tonight. I can't. I'm duty NCO tonight, and I'm calling until 5 o'clock tomorrow night. Then bring it tomorrow night. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. Can't you come earlier? No. All right, then. 8 o'clock.
6204 white. Hello, Carl, what's up? You did? When? Oh, that's great. Looks like we're in business. Let's meet at 1600, my office. Okay, fine. See you later. Tom, a conversation was monitored between Prentice and Froelich. Prentice is delivering a package to Froelich's house tomorrow night. Now, I'm going over to G2 and get permission for a raid. Meanwhile, you get out to Froelich's house and study the layout. You better take one of Andrew's men with you. You may need him. Yes, sir. Yes? Sir, Major White is here. He'd like to see you. Send him in. Yes, sir. Have a seat, Jim. Thank you, sir. Now, what's on your mind? Sir, you recall a Prentice case. Well, I have information from West German intelligence that Prentice is going to be at Froelich's house tomorrow night at 20 hours. And I firmly believe that it's for the purpose of passing classified information. Good. It looks like you've just about got it wrapped up then. Yes, sir. And with the General's permission, I'd like to raid the premises tomorrow night when Prentice is there. Andrews is going to have the proper warrants, and he'll also have police on hand for Froelich's arrest. Can you prepare a plan and carry it out by tomorrow? Yes, sir. Go ahead with your plan. I'll make my recommendation to the general and get his approval before you carry your plan out. Thank you, sir. Map and ground reconnaissance are important to the success of the raid. In the interest of security, a ground reconnaissance must be made with the utmost discretion. The information should indicate all avenues of approach and escape. The locations of all entrances, exits, windows, fire escapes, and any means of transportation which can be used for a getaway should be noted. Additional information should include the communications facilities available to the suspects and the raiders fields of fire, and cover and concealment available to the raiding party and the suspects. Animals that could raise an alarm, or mechanical warning systems. If possible, the attitude, relationship, and sympathy of neighbors should be determined. If they are friendly toward the suspects, they could aid in their escape or alert them prior to the raid. At 1600 hours, Major White meets with key personnel to plan the raid. In the interest of security, initial information about a raid is disseminated to selected individuals on a need-to-know basis only. The entire raiding party will receive the final briefing. Captain Slocum, how many men do you think you'll need? Based on the situation, two CID investigators should be enough. Harris, you and Johnson will pair off with the CID men and become part of the covering party. You'll be the first element into the target area about 15 minutes before raid time. I'll give you the exact time tomorrow at the final briefing. Now, park your car here. Take up a position here, 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 and here at the rear of the house. That'll cover the front, the side, and the rear door should they try to escape. Now, I can't impress upon you how important it is that each and every man carry off his end of this raid. A raid plan should be as simple as possible. This will help eliminate misunderstanding of orders and instructions. Commissar Anders, how many men will you be using? I'll only use two men. Harry, you and Jack will be members of the entering party. Now, when we get to the gate, you've got to be extremely careful. The mission of the entering party is to effect initial entry into the target. Conduct the preliminary search of the suspects and the area. And apprehend and remove prisoners to the place of detention. 
One member of the party will list all evidence, prepare receipts, and maintain inventory of items confiscated. Tom, you and your partner will follow Prentice until he gets to the house. After he enters, take up positions about here. When the entering party goes into the house, you then become members of the covering party. Your primary mission the will mission be of the to covering cover party, the entering party is to provide cover for the entering party. Guard the vehicles and equipment. Apprehend individuals attempting to leave or enter the target area and conduct a thorough search of the target area after the entering party departs. I'll be raid commander. Ross will be assistant. Transportation will be provided by this office. The raid will begin on my signal. We'll meet here tomorrow afternoon at 18.30 for the final briefing. Are there any questions? Sir, what about an alternate plan? I will give it to you at the final briefing. Are there any further questions? Yes, Tom. How soon after the covering party enters will the uh, entering party follow? Well, it shouldn't be more than 15 or 20... Alternate plans must be prepared to meet any possible changes in the situation. For instance, if the original plan presumes the surrender of the suspects, an alternate plan is prepared in the event they offer resistance. At 1950 hours the following evening, the first element of the raiding party arrives in the target area. The men have received their final briefing and know exactly what to do. Special Agent Harris and his CID partner move quietly and inconspicuously to their assigned stakeout points to the front of the target. Special Agent Johnson and his CID partner move to their assigned positions located at the rear of the target. At 1955, the main body of the raiding party begins arriving in the vicinity of the target. The raid has been set for 20.05 hours. Alternate time, five minutes from whenever Sergeant Prentice enters the house. Each team moves to a prearranged position designed to surround and seal off the area. At 20 hundred hours, Prentice arrives in the vicinity of Froelich's residence. The surveillance vehicle moves past to its pre-assigned position. At 2006, Franz Hornung arrives in the area. His intention is to obtain the photographs from Freulich after Prentice has departed.
At 20.08, exactly five minutes after Prentice entered the house, the raid commander signals the entering party to move into the target. Quickly grasping the situation, Hornung proceeds to make himself scarce. To ensure the element of surprise, the initial entry must be made with speed. One hundred. Two hundred. Three hundred. What's that? I Prisoners will be taken to a place of detention where a thorough body search will be conducted. Okay, it's all yours. The covering party will now make a thorough search of the premises. The search is conducted in a systematic, clockwise manner from any designated point, such as an entrance door. The search includes examination of the walls, the ceilings, the floors, and the furnishings. Electrical fixtures and other likely places of concealment must be examined carefully. Nothing should be bypassed. Even the most unlikely places of concealment may yield evidence. item of evidence must be recorded and tagged, and a receipt given to the owner. As the search in Froelich's house continues, his accomplice is apprehended, attempting to enter East Germany through a different checkpoint. Horning will now be taken to West German counterintelligence, where he will be interrogated. Eventually, he and Froelich will be arraigned and tried as espionage agents. Sergeant Prentice will be charged and tried by the U.S. military authorities. When a military intelligence unit is engaged in a raid and search operation, a number of fundamental principles and techniques must be applied. They include discrete surveillance of the suspects to obtain information and cooperation with the proper civil authorities, as well as the military. Preparation should include planning, coordination, selection and assignments of personnel, and procurement of equipment. The plan should be simple. The execution should be accomplished with speed 
and surprise. And the search should be systematic and thorough. These and other actions portrayed in this film are vital to the success of a raid and search operation.